In this tutorial, we will see how to perform assembly line balancing. Assembly line balancing is the process whereby tasks are assigned to workstations on an assembly line. Please review the precedence diagram tutorial before watching this tutorial. There are five steps to assembly line balancing. 1. Draw the precedence diagram. This is used to make sure the tasks are assigned in the proper order. 2. Compute the cycle time. This is the time that each workstation will have to perform all of its assigned tasks. Note that steps 1 and 2 can be performed in either order. 3. Compute the theoretical minimum number of workstations required. 4. Assign the task to the appropriate workstations. Note that not all problems have a single, correct solution. 5. Compute the resulting efficiency. We will now see how to perform assembly line balancing using an example. In this example, there are 8 tasks to be performed on an assembly line. The activities, the time required in seconds, and the predecessors for each activity is shown on the slide. They operate for 8 hours a day and wish to produce 800 units per day. This is one of the examples from the Presence Diagram tutorial. The resulting diagram is shown on the slide. Cycle time is calculated as the operating time per day divided by the desired output rate per day. Of course, as long as the time units were the same, they could be hours, days, weeks, or any other unit of time. The problem tells us they operate 8 hours a day, but the task times are in seconds, so we convert 8 hours a day into seconds by multiplying by 60 minutes in an hour times 60 seconds in a minute. Dividing by the desired rate of 800 per day gives us a desired cycle time of 36 seconds. Two notes about cycle time. First, there's no point in having more decimal points than are used in the task times. Since the task times for this problem are given in whole seconds, we only need a whole number for the cycle time. While this cycle time was a whole number, we could have safely rounded it to a whole number if it had decimal points. Second, some textbooks call this the desired cycle time. The reason is it may require adjustment. The cycle time cannot be shorter than the longest task time. If it were, no workstation would have enough time to complete that longest activity. To avoid that, if the calculated cycle time is shorter than the longest task time, you increase the cycle time to match the longest task time. The longest task time in this problem is 30 seconds, so that is not an issue for this problem. The theoretical minimum number of workstations is calculated as the sum of the task times divided by the cycle time. For this example, the sum of the task times is 145 and the cycle time is 36. That works out to 4.028. The theoretical minimum number of workstations needs to be a whole number. After all, you cannot have a fractional workstation. With a theoretical minimum number of workstations of 4.028, four workstations is not enough. You always round this number up. So, the theoretical minimum number of workstations we need for this example is five. There's no guarantee that we can do the problem with just five workstations. All we know is that it will take at least five workstations. At the first workstation, the only task we can assign first is A. Assigning A takes up 25 seconds, leaving 11 seconds available for additional work. With A assigned, B, C, and D are all available to be assigned. However, B takes 15 seconds and D takes 20 seconds and only 11 seconds are available. That means C is the only free activity that can be assigned to workstation 1, so we assign C. That leaves 11 minus 10 equals 1 second of free time, not enough to do anything else, so we move to the next workstation. With C assigned, B, F, and D are available to be assigned. Since there is enough time to assign any of them, we need a rule to pick which one to assign. There is a variety of different rules we could use. 1. Longest processing time. By that, D and F would be tied, so we would need a tiebreaker rule. 2. Shortest processing time. By that, we would pick B. 3. Greatest number of followers. B has 2, E and H. F has 1, H. And D has 1, B. By that, we would pick B. Four. Least number of followers. By that, D and F would be tied. 5. Ranked positional weight. This is the sum of the task time for that task and all of the tasks that follow it along all possible paths that go through that point. For B, it is 15 plus 30 plus 20 equals 65. For F, it is 20 plus 20 equals 40. For D, it is 20 plus 5 equals 25. By that rule, we would select B. Note that each problem has a single rule that is used for all the selections. You do not switch between them. Using the longest processing time, with D and F tied, and both having one follower, I arbitrarily selected F. The arbitrary selection indicates why these problems can have more than one solution. 
Selecting F leaves 36 minus 20 equals 16 seconds. With F completed, B and D are available to be assigned. Note that H cannot be assigned yet because E has not been completed. While both B and D are available, there's only enough time to do B, so B is assigned. That leaves 16 minus 15 equals one second, and we move to the next workstation. At this point, E and D can be assigned. Using the longest processing time again, we select E. That leaves 36 minus 30 equals six seconds, and not enough time to assign another activity, so we move to the next workstation. At this point, D and H can be assigned, and longest processing time is a tie. We select D because it has more followers. That leaves 36 minus 20 equals 16 seconds. At this point, G and H can be assigned, but there's only enough time to assign G. That leaves 16 minus 5 equals 11 seconds, and we move to the next workstation. At this point, only H is left, so it is assigned to workstation 5. That leaves 36 minus 20 equals 16 seconds. Efficiency is calculated as 1 minus the sum of the idle times divided by the number of workstations used times the cycle time. The workstation idle times are 1 plus 1 plus 6 plus 11 plus 16 equals 35. Note that for those workstations with more than one task assigned, we only use the last number for the time remaining. With five workstations and a cycle time of 36, the result is 80.6%. Since five was the theoretical minimum number of workstations, this is as good as we can do in spite of it being only 80%. Efficiency is only a function of the number of workstations used. That is, every arrangement that required five workstations would have exactly the same efficiency. These were covered in the tutorial. Just as a reminder, the five common task selection rules are 1. Longest processing time 2. Shortest processing time 3. Greatest number of followers 4. Least number of followers 5. Ranked positional weight This is sometimes called greatest positional weight. Note that one or more rules are assigned at the beginning of the problem, and the same rules in the same order are used whenever there is more than one task that can be assigned. In this example, there are eight tasks to be performed on an assembly line. The activities, the time required in seconds, and the predecessors for each activity is shown on the slide. They operate for eight hours a day and wish to produce 1,400 units per day. Use longest task time to select between multiple operations. Use greatest number of followers as a tiebreaker. Since you've seen an example already, let me suggest that you pause the video and try to work this problem on your own. Once you're done, you can use the video to check your work and spot any mistakes you might have made. The resulting precedence diagram is shown on the slide. Just like in the first example, they are working 28,800 seconds a day. The only change is the desired daily output of 1,400. That yields a cycle time of 20 seconds. This also shows a relationship between capacity and cycle time. The lower the cycle time, the higher the capacity. We saw this when the capacity went from 800 in the first example to 1,400 here and the cycle time dropped from 36 to 20 seconds. With total task time of 47 seconds and a cycle time of 20 seconds, we will need 2.35 workstations, which we round up to three. We first assign A because it is the only open task. That leaves 20 minus five equals 15 seconds. With A assigned, B and C can be assigned. C has the longest task time, so we assign it. That leaves 15 minus six equals nine seconds. With C assigned, B and F can be assigned. F has the longest task time, so we assign it. That leaves 9 minus 9 equals 0 seconds, so we move on to the next workstation. With F assigned, only B can be assigned, so we assign it. That leaves 20 minus 3 equals 17 seconds. With B assigned, D and E can be assigned. D has the longest task time, so we assign it. That leaves 17 minus 5 equals 12 seconds. With D assigned, only E can be assigned, so we assign it. That leaves 12 minus 4 equals 8 seconds. With E assigned, only G can be assigned, so we assign it. That leaves 8 minus 1 equals 1 second, so we move to the next workstation. The last remaining task is H, and it is assigned to a workstation 3. That leaves 20 minus 8 equals 12 seconds. With 13 seconds of idle time between the three workstations, efficiency calculates out to 78.3%. However, the tasks were assigned in the theoretical minimum number of workstations, so no improvement is possible. If this video helped you working operations management problems, 
please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel.